When I discovered that poetry could be used as a tool to confront racism, oppression, world politics, and gender inequality, I hurled myself into the craft. I had found a form of civil disobedience that worked for me. Most of my poetry is recorded. At this point in my career, I have recorded a combined total of 170 albums, CD singles, EPs, and digital downloads. A fraction of that material is on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, and other streaming platforms. But I never limit myself to the streaming services. Two of the major themes in my work are resistance and identity. These themes can be found in most of my poems. Lately, I've been focusing on family and this COVID issue affecting the world. Whether it's rehearsing late at night, scrapbooking with my latest press clippings, or late night eating after a reading or performance while on tour, I try to allow myself to breathe and enjoy what life has to offer. It's silly to adhere to the rules of the maze without finding ways to break out of the maze. This video, Eyes on the Prize intro, is a spoken word poem accompanied by music. The video was filmed by Cliff Vision Johnson, a poet, rapper, playwright, indie filmmaker, and a member of the Black Line Insurgents, a conscious hip-hop group I co-founded in Chesapeake, VA in 2018. The poem is really a revolutionary reflection on the conditions of black people in America. Throughout all of the racism, oppression, and physical and psychological trauma, we keep our eyes on the prize, which is success, socio-political advancement, and healthy family structures. You may hear about the celebration of Kwanzaa at the end of the year, which is a celebration of family, self-determination, unity, economic progress, and nation building. I try to observe the principles of Kwanzaa every day. Everything I create has to be completed with black freedom and liberation in mind. Around the time of the death of Trayvon Martin, who was killed in 2012, I wrote a poem called American Outlaw and then set it to music with the help of singer-songwriter Sam Barrett. The song ended up on my EP Countdown to Revolution, which came out in 2014. The video, which was filmed in 2015, would also include images of Sandra Bland and Eric Garner. I believe the poem captured the righteous anger I felt at the time, and still does, whenever an unarmed black person or African American is killed by law enforcement or by white vigilantes. These white vigilantes remind me of lynch mobs before and after the Civil War. Knows how long you'll last, they say, young man. If you're scared, you'll fall, so be quick on the draw. Like an American outlaw. I'm perched between a ledge and a cliff. Only source of freedom is the wings on my back. Similar to electric jazz, maybe a Miles Davis riff. I don't recognize small puppets who attack. Outlaw culture is tattooed on my skin. A fierce reminder of my familiar wasteland. Aims are bigger than curl tail freedoms I hide within. My objective is to fly to a higher place and land. I say, young man, don't move too fast. Nobody knows how long you last. They say, young man, don't dream too big. Chasing those dreams makes it hard to live. They say, young man, don't move too fast. Nobody knows how long you last. They say, young man, if you're scared, you fall. So be quick on the draw. Like an American outlaw. Onward through the traffic lights, with altitude beneath my feet. I bow down to no god in a three-piece suit. The pursuit of happiness is not owned by any man but me. Heavy is my social armor, that's the truth. I'm a man forced to keep self-determination in a holster. Forced to look at liberty with my fists. Placed and ready, that's part of my culture. Say, young man, don't move too fast. Nobody knows how long you last. They say, young man, don't dream too big. Chasing those dreams makes it hard to live. They say, young man, don't move too fast. Nobody knows how long you last. They say, young man, if you're scared, you fall. So be quick on the draw. Like an American outlaw. It's been about that time. Opposition is the motto. It's time for revolution, I'm about that. 
always been about that time. Another way I explore resistance and identity is through the images that appear in my videos. I carefully select the content in an effort to control how I present myself to a larger audience. Because mainstream television executives, movie executives, and even some media outlets tend to focus on stereotypes and negative attributes that they think represent African American life or the urban landscape. In this video, Talk to You, I asked the videographer, Alexander J, to focus on positive black images of family life. And no, those ladies are not actresses. My wife, Elisa, and my daughter, Zuri, got in on the action. Some smiles have wings that are brighter than the sun. Some touches speak a language that only two people understand. I understand your presence is a gift, neatly wrapped in God's plans. I shed my inhibitions when your personality demonstrates how beauty is crafted with liquid fingertips, with careful sparks, with precision intelligence. That everything of you is relevant to the intricate way I breathe. Hey there, baby. Let me talk to you. I'm just thinking so in love with you. Try me crazy, spin me round around. Hey there, baby, can we talk a while? Conversation has a lineage when imitated by human stars. I'm akin to your breath, to your unique identity, fusing itself with my consciousness. Love is a familiar sight, a familiar place that you and I create from nonverbal dialogue. I recognize your fire, steadily blazing beneath the roots of my feet. Just to talk to your inviting composition, your divine makeup, I realize you're my other half the rest of my life. In 2019, I drove out to Cortland, Virginia, about an hour away from Chesapeake, VA, to visit the site of Nat Turner's Rebellion and shoot my video, If I Die Before I Wait. Nat Turner was the infamous slave preacher that was divinely inspired to lead a bloody rebellion in 1831. Cliff went with me. He was the videographer for the video. We shot the video at the marker on Maharan Road, Virginia Route 35. If I die before I wait. As I pray, I notice there are 160,000 scars on the world for immigrant girls and women forced to suffer female circumcision, and 400,000 tears for the black Sudanese murdered because of genocide savagery. Yes, God, my faith is broken, shattered like a black man's front windshield by police gunfire, slaughtered like a civil rights activist in the 60s or a slave preacher in the 1830s, and so God, this is me, love me or dead me. If I die before I wait, please God forgive me for my mistakes. I believe there's a fundamental power in poetry, and in any art form a person uses to hurl him or herself at the machine, at the society, at the world at large. That resistance, that awareness is capable of transforming, transcending, and creating storylines that stand as alternatives to the rigid ways historians document history. At this point in my career, I can only hope to perfect my craft and continue doing it for the love of the people. Yeah, mic check one, two. The remix. That. You can't remix the spirit, man. Levitate, meditate. Avoid the hate. It's hard yeah. to see.